Good morning everybody, Silas back again today. Just got here to the yard, I haven't been here for a few days due to rain and having to go do other stuff. So I'm here now, I have no clue what I'm gonna get into, but we're gonna get into it together. There are a ton of cars dumped in my road. These have all come in within the last couple days that I wasn't here. We have several tow companies that have keys to our gates. That way when they get a car that's just junk or we have them go pick a car up or something like that, they can bring it in here and dump it. Uh, I think about 10 of these or so are ones that came from an auction, an impound auction, and we just said uh, just dump them in the road. They'll be back soon. I have no clue what's here. There might be some good stuff in some of these. I don't know. We'll kind of go through them a little bit. Uh, some of these are ones we actually bought from people, so I'm sure they've been cleaned out. But there's a few of them down there towards that end that actually may have some good stuff in them because they came from the impound sale. So I guess we'll find out. This truck here my dad dropped off last week. It runs and drives perfect, but the title's messed up. And then on top of that, it is absolutely filthy inside, covered in dog hair. An old man had it, and everywhere he went, his dog went with him. And then he passed away, and the title was messed up. The family doesn't want to mess with doing all the paperwork it takes to straighten the title out, so they just sold it to us for scrap. I am contemplating taking this out to my place and using it for a yard truck. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do that yet or not. I may just crush it. I don't know. We'll decide on that later. And on these vehicles here, the ones that have the little pink writing up on the windshield are the ones that came from the impound sale. The rest of these are just ones that we bought from other people. So I'm guessing most of these don't have much good in them. Like this in here has been sitting in a tree row for a long time, evidently. Pretty nasty, and it smells like rotted mildew, so... Don't really care if there's anything in that one or not. But all these cars still have converters on them. They have aluminum wheels on them. They might have batteries in them. I don't know, so I'm just going to fire up the loader. Going to come out here, and we're going to start processing them. This piece here was actually free. It was where this little station wagon was. That was there, too, and they said, hey, you can have that if you want it. So the tow company said, sure, we'll take it. So they grabbed it. They grabbed this car at the same time and brought them both in. Toyota All Track. Haven't seen one of these in a long time. Full of rat's nests. Smells like rats in there. Price of scrap has really gone down quite a bit. It's lower now than it's been in over a year at least. Uh, it keeps going down and I think it's gonna go down even more. So as far as me crushing cars, things are probably gonna slow down a little bit. Uh, at least I'm hoping anyway. I've got a lot of cleanups to do and things like that. And as you can see, it's pretty well underwater out here. It is extremely muddy. We have gotten a ton of rain. It didn't get any rain earlier in the year when it was mushroom season. And now that the mushroom season's over, now we're getting all the rain. So that's kind of frustrating, but that's okay. I have absolutely nowhere to put all these cars. So I'm gonna have to crush and ship probably a few of them at least. Uh, probably as few as possible. Don't wanna sell them when it's too low, but we do have to sell something just cause we will run out of room. Well, if you watch my videos, you know I was really, really trying to dig out some cars that were back there. But uh, I don't think that's going to happen now. That's quite a bit of water. There's about 8 inches of water in places through there. So I'm sure it's another 8 inches of mud below that at least. So I'm not going to be driving through there anytime soon. You guys want to see something really cool? I found something out here. Some of you may have seen this before. Some of you may not have, but I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do a magic trick with this spark plug. First thing we got to do is we got to bust this spark plug up a little bit. So I got my hammer right here. I'm going to smack it a couple times and I'm going to try not to hit it too hard because I don't want it to just crumble to nothing, but I do want that porcelain to break up. So let's see if we can get this done. There we go. Man, that thing was tough. All these little tiny pieces is what we want. And in fact, that's probably enough of them right there. Got that piece, this little piece, and a couple more right here. That should be enough right there. I guess we'll find out. See that window there? Got these pieces in my hand. 
I'm not going to throw them very hard. I'm just going to lightly toss them at that window and we'll see what happens. Didn't work. I guess I need more. You can actually see where a bunch of them hit it. That must just be a real, yeah, it even chipped the window right there on that spot. You can't really see. It's not focusing right. But it put a couple chips in the window. This must, just must be a really tough window or something. We're going to try the back window. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. You can see where the, the one that broke it was right there. That's what it's supposed to do. It just shatters those back windows out. You can see that, oh man, I wish I could get this to focus on this window better. But there's a ton of chips. You can kind of see them there. There's a bunch there. Those are all chips gone out of this glass from the times I threw it at this window. And how it didn't actually bust the window, I don't know. Pretty cool little trick. Anytime you find a spark plug, just bust up that porcelain. And it might have helped if I busted the porcelain up a little bit finer. But then you just go out, find a junk car, and throw it at the window. Pretty cool. There we go. Now that window's broken too. It's been a busy, busy day. I've been buying bunches of stuff, buying bunches of converters, so I've been dealing with a lot of people. So I kind of quit crushing cars, and instead what I'm doing is I have all my stuff I need to pull batteries and catalytic converters right here. So I'm going through and pulling those off of the cars, and then I'm stacking them. Then I'll take them in there later, pull the aluminum wheels off, and drain the fluids out of them at another time, because that's kind of all in one area. So just trying to break it up a little bit. Main thing is, is I'd like to be able to get my road open again, because right now it's blocked with cars. I've got about, uh, about half of them moved now, I think. There are a couple trucks down there that we're going to hang on to just because there's some good parts on them but worry about those later what i'm going to go ahead and do is grab these cars one at a time take them up there kind of dig through them see if there's anything good in them then we'll pull the converters and the batteries and i'll stick them in the pile and then another day i'll worry about finishing the process and crushing them let's see what we can find in car number one we've got a pair of nasty glasses a bunch of rocks for some unknown reason what do we got here and there we go now we have lunch olives i'm sure those are absolutely delicious what do we got down here looks like we got a penny and that's about it well i guess a penny found is a penny earned or that's not how the saying goes but that's how we're going to say it checking here yeah, I'll kind of look around the rest of the car, but I really don't think we're going to find much in this one. Got a real funky setup on this one. This exhaust on this car is kind of cool looking. It's kind of dual exhaust and kind of not dual exhaust. <laughs> but I got these two converters up here. The one down there will be easy to get off. I put the forks on here. I did not realize there's a bracket right here. And so I went to pop them and kind of pull them out of here a little bit. And this one broke free. But then this one here snapped right here and right there. And then I realized there's a bracket. So I got to go ahead and cut that bracket. And then that way, I, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull this one out from the bottom. I'm probably going to have to go in from the top and cut it up there. But uh, I'll get them out of there one way or another. I'm not sure what these are worth. I can't really remember what these bring right now. I know prices are down on everything, but this one down here is just a wire. So it's really not worth a whole lot.
I started cutting it up here, but I was using a pretty old blade. I've been using it quite a bit, and it cut through the outer coating okay. Then it got to the inner coating. I didn't realize it was double layered, and it does not want to cut that inner layer. Whatever's in there is extremely hard, so I started cutting it out here, and now it's kind of binding up on me. I can't quite cut the rest of the way through, but I think that's enough there where I can go ahead and grab it on the other side with the forks and just pop it out of there. I got the one off. The other one, I started to squish it. It's not wanting to cooperate, so I'm not going to be able to rip it out of there. I don't want to ruin it. Right now, it's all still in there. But I did get the pressure off of it to where that gap opened up quite a bit wider, so I can put a new blade on there and go ahead and cut it the rest of the way through. Then I can just grab it out by hand without everything just kind of falling apart on it. There we go. I got it cut. Now it should come out of the. Oh, I need to cut that other O2 sensor real quick. So I'll do that and then I'll grab it out of there. I got it out of there. I got my finger pretty good though it open that's why you should always wear gloves of course i learned absolutely nothing from this and i will continue to not wear gloves <laughs> i hate wearing gloves but i got both of them off they're both full and then this one over here i looked them up they're actually worth more than i thought they were at today's prices as of recording this they're worth about 250 bucks a piece and then the little bitty one over here is worth about 70. it's actually not that small but it's just a low grade so what is that 570 dollars roughly worth of converters there so not too bad i was thinking those are way less than that that'll make up for a few of these other cars that i've gotten out of here that didn't have any converters at all on them a lot of times when we buy these cars at the impound obviously we can't crawl underneath the car and check and make sure the converters are good and so we just kind of look at the car and assume if it had good converters this is what it's worth and we might drop a little bit just to cover our bases and that's what we pay for the cars and so this in here we made pretty good money on whereas i don't remember which one oh that that burnt pt cruiser up there on the pile that one there came from impound as well i mean it weighs absolutely nothing and it's been stripe piped at some point in time kansas doesn't do emissions and they don't do visual emissions inspections or, or nothing on their cars and so at some point in time somebody just put a piece of straight pipe in there on it so we're gonna lose a bunch of money on that one i'm getting quite the pile pulled off though i only had one aftermarket and then that PT Cruiser didn't have any on it. But other than that, all of the other ones I've pulled off have been OEM and full. So it's been a pretty good day so far. That's actually a really good day. Usually the, the odds are not that much in your favor. I managed to get three batteries and a copper radiator. One thing I've noticed that's really weird is a lot of these impound cars don't have batteries in them. I don't know if the people just kept their batteries out of the cars after the wreck or if the guy at the impound yard kept the batteries because he needed them for something else or what the deal is but i mean it doesn't really matter they ain't worth nothing right now anyway hardly but still it's just kind of an odd thing i'm running out of time today though for working on this so what i'm probably going to do is probably look through a couple of these cars just real quick with you guys and then i want to leave and then tomorrow morning i'll come back and we'll finish going through the rest of them obviously i won't be able to pop the trunks on these right now so i have to pop the trunks when i process them but if i find anything good i'll be sure to tell you oh there's a penny That might be all that's good in this one. I don't really see much else. Oh, there's another penny. Nothing else. Oh, there's another penny. I keep thinking there's nothing else, and then I find more. There's a penny. And a dime. There you go. Not bad. Under the back seat, I found two pennies and a quarter. And then I found this card here. We have a bowling alley here called the Alley. And they've got laser tag and arcade games and stuff like that. And you can win points. So I'll take this and see if there's anything on it. Because uh, you can put either points on these to play games, or when you win the games, your tickets go onto this as well. They don't actually print out tickets anymore, and so that way you can get prizes with it. So my kids like going there, so I'll take that home and see if there's anything on it. Let's check out this LeSabre. Oh, uh, looks like a tub full of Cheerios. So that's nice. I guess it's better than the dog food car I did last time. That car stank to high heaven. Anything down here looks like a tire pressure gauge. Only goes up to 50 pounds. What is that? That's 60 pounds. I don't have my glasses on. I couldn't quite read it, but yeah, 60 pounds. I guess I can use that. Although on my trailer, I think my trailers hold 65 pounds. And my truck holds 70 pounds, so that may not do me any good, but I guess I can use it on the loader. The loader only holds 45 pounds. Got something up here in the ashtray. Looks like uh, one of those doohickeys. Never use these. I mean, if you just want to use them like in your shop to hang on the wall, that way you can just pluck it off the wall or something like that that's okay but if you actually use these in your pocket they come apart so easy and you lose them all the time i know tons of people that have lost their keys with this we got a quarter a penny and a dime so hey we made a little bit of money so far today check the glove box real quick while we're here looks like 
What is this? Oh, someone paid 20 bucks for that. What is this? What is it? Okay, I figured it out. It opens up. I couldn't figure out what it was, but it opens up. I'm not sure what's in here yet. So that's that's what's in there. We'll dump it out real quick. Some sort of charm necklace. It's kind of interesting. What all's in there? We got dog lover, lucky horseshoe, happy face, some hearts, some gems. I don't know. It's interesting. It's got a little tag on it. I can't quite read what it says. It says origami owl on it. So probably not worth any money, but just kind of a neat little thing. I'll save it with my junkyard treasure. There we go. A book of stamps. Looks like two are gone off of this side and all of them are gone off that side, but still I paid, what, $7.40 for that? $20.37. See, uh, stamps haven't been that cheap in a long time. If you were to go out and buy those now, of course those aren't forever stamps, are they? Nope, those aren't forever. So, for those that don't know how stamps work, I know <laughs> stamps are kind of an old thing, but the way stamps work is they sell forever stamps, which are good whatever the price of a stamp is at that point in time, they're still worth that amount no matter what you paid for them, whereas these will always be worth $0.37. Cents. So I don't know what it costs to ship a letter now. I think it's like 49 cents or 50 cents, somewhere around that. So I'd actually have to put two of these on a letter to be able to send it. But still, I got them for the price of free, so I can't complain. Well, hello there, Mr. Wasp. They got a nest going on in here. He's been buzzing around my head. I wondered why. Their stings don't bother me, so I just ignore them when I see them. But I'll have to make sure I get that out of there. Because in case somebody else comes out here and they are allergic to them or they do bother somebody else, I don't want somebody else to get stung. I got time for one more car and I gotta go. So we'll look in this one real quick. Bunches of masks. You can always tell the cars that broke down right after COVID because the cars are clear full of masks that they no longer use and they just throw them everywhere. This thing's clear full of trash. I don't really feel like digging in it. Kind of look in the cup holders a little bit for pennies. Don't see anything in there. Check the center console. Nothing good in there. Nothing in the back seat. Nope, nothing back here. That's somebody's debit card. I can't show it on camera, but there's a debit card down here on the floor. I'm gonna grab it real quick. It's expired, so I'm just gonna leave it in the car. If I find these that are still good and valid, I always take them and destroy them. That way nobody can ever steal their money. But that one there is long expired, like seven years ago expired. So I'm not too worried about that. This car did have a trunk release. So see if there's anything in here. Nothing in there. I'm guessing this car has been sitting a long time. Judging by these faded stickers, that expired debit card, that sort of stuff. I'm guessing what happened with this car is it probably got wrecked a long time ago. And it probably sat in somebody's road, uh, yard or driveway or something like that. And finally the neighbors complained on it. And uh, all the enforcement here is based on complaints in the city of Hutch. So somebody complained on it and they didn't get it moved in time. So the city came and took it. And that's unfortunate for them. They don't just come and take it overnight though. They send you a letter saying, hey, you need to remove this car. And usually I think they give you 30 days. Sometimes it's seven days if you left the car like in the street in front of your house or on jack stands or something like that, they'll kind of reduce the time. But usually they give you plenty of time to figure out what you're gonna do with the car. So they could have sold that car to us and got some money out of it rather than just lose it. But most people just don't care. And they just say, oh, well, let the city take it. What they don't realize is that the city then will bill you for removing the car off your property. You get the tow bill. <laughs> The city has to pay the tow company it's something like 30 or 40 dollars per car that they remove and they bill you for that and you have to pay it if you don't they'll stick it on your water bill if you don't have a water bill they'll put it on your property taxes and if you don't have property taxes then i guess you just don't have to do it but most people some way somehow they get the money out of them well, that's it for today i'm going to load up all these catalytic converters that i've got off already and put the loader up get everything locked up and head out i will be back in the morning and we'll finish going through all these cars in other news i found somebody finally after searching for months and months and months i finally found somebody that actually wants to work his job is to go along here along the outside of the fence for now and then we'll do the inside later and cut down all the trees that are growing up against the fence it's been raining a lot so he's just cutting them down for now but he'll go back through later and spray them with killer all along the edge that way they won't grow back, but he got a ton of them cut down. He even got the ones up here beside the building cut down. Those things have been growing like crazy for, I don't know, for a long time, and I haven't been able to find anybody to do it, but he's getting it done. Good morning, we are back again. We've got a change of plans. I had a bunch of stuff happen that I've got to take care of now. 
so I'm probably gonna have to stop processing the cars down there maybe later today I'll have time to go down there and work on them some more but I sold one of my old trucks so I've got to go in the yard over here and dig it out the truck I sold is this old yellow one right here I'm definitely glad to see it go to a new home where it's actually gonna be it's not gonna be restored he's gonna skin apart the whole truck out but he needs a ton of parts off of it. all I was gonna do is pull the long bit off of it and probably crush the rest of it so that would have been really unfortunate for such a complete and original truck it's got a 360 with a four speed I did sell the instrument cluster and a few other parts out of it a long time ago but uh, other than that all I was gonna save is the bed and then scrap the rest that's actually all I bought this truck for was the bed but what I've got to do is I've got to get all these letters out of the back of it I think there's some stuff inside the cab I got to get out yeah, I got a bunch of hubcaps, got a bill of housing, a radio. But what I got to do is just come in here with the loader, grab a hold of it, pull it out of here. All the tires hold air on this, so it rolls really easy. I'll just grab a hold of it and roll it out here, clean everything out of it, and then when he gets here, he can load it up. I got the truck drug out, it still has all the stuff in it. I'll clean it out in a little bit. Right now I need to go ahead and move some more of these cars out of here. I gotta keep making room. I can just wait on that truck until he gets here. I would really, really like to be able to get that other gate open, but if not, oh well. But anyway, when he gets here, he can help me clean that truck out. We already looked through the inside of this car. I've gotta grab the battery. The battery's hanging off the front of it there where it was in the wreck. And then we're gonna check out and see what's in the trunk. See, oh, what is that? Oh, that's cool. Check that out. Check that out. That's one of those deals that you ride on now. Obviously, this one probably doesn't work. It doesn't seem like it's working. Just about broke something there, but that's pretty cool right there. Well, that's kind of cool. The guy that brought that red truck back there behind me, and just now he was pulling up on the scales while I was filming that thing, and he saw it. He said, how much of that? And I said, I don't care, 10 bucks. I don't think it works, and there's no cord for it. So he said, sure, he'll take it home and tinker with it. So made $10 on it. Only well, bad thing is, is I was going to put that in the thumbnail, and now I don't have it anymore to make a thumbnail, but I'll figure something else out. Let's see what else is in here. I see some good stuff in here. This here is pretty cool. Now, I probably wouldn't use this for anything, but what this is great for is for when I package stuff. A lot of times when I put carburetors in a box, I'll cut a square of this out and put it in the bottom of the box and another square at the top of the box. It gives us just a little bit of cushion. That way, if the box gets dropped or something, nothing breaks. So I'll take that home and use it for packing material. Got a sleeping bag that I don't have a use for. I've got a nice sleeping bag already. Got some yummy pop tarts, all brand new in the box still. Who knows how old they are? Got a bag here. Looks like it has first aid kit, book, looks like an old Bible, rainbow study Bible, set of jumper cables. Oh, those are pretty good ones there. They got, well, they're not real good, but they're pretty good. They got decent copper leads on them. So yeah, we'll hang on to those. Oh, check that out. Is that a Leatherman? No way, that is a Leatherman. Oh, that's cool. That's a pretty nice one there. Leatherman Blast. I don't know what those things cost, but I know they used to be a very expensive item. I had one years ago and I lost it and I could, when I was a kid and I could never afford to replace it. That's pretty cool there. Let's see what else. We have some antifreeze, I'll always use that. Set it aside. We got some more antifreeze. GM vehicles only though. So that'll stay right here in the car. Got some mostly empty things of oil. But you guys know the vehicles I run all like to leak oil. So I'll run that. Got some pliers and a hammer. Little miniature pipe wrench. Screwdriver, another screwdriver, some more pliers. And I just found this as well as I was gathering the stuff up. Bushnell. I think that sounds like a good quality brand. I could just be getting it confused with something else. Still works. Huh, I'll have to look that up. If it's a good quality one, I'll keep it. If not, I'll just throw it in a junk pile and take it to the auction. I looked them up real quick, and they actually don't sell this model anymore, the Blast. But when this was new, it was like 40 bucks, so that's not too bad. And then this flashlight here, same thing. They don't sell this exact model anymore. But a comparable model now is about 40 to 50 bucks, so not bad. I mean, obviously both of these are used, so they're not worth that now, but if I was to need these and go out and buy them, that's what they would cost. So I'll hang on to them. I'll probably throw these in my camping stuff. I'll pull the batteries out of this so they don't corrode. 
because I probably won't go camping again for a little while until it cools back down. But yeah, those will both be handy little camping tools. And last but not least, I found a quarter in here too. So yeah, all sorts of good stuff in this thing. Every time I look through here again, I find something else, but I think we got it all this time. I hate to see that one go. I really like that truck, but you can't keep them all. And I just got too much going on. I had to bust out the sun hat. It was getting pretty warm out here. That sun was baking down on me, and I would really rather not get skin cancer. That's why I wear full clothing. I don't wear tank tops and shorts out here. I just, I've seen a lot of people get skin cancer in this line of work, and I just prefer to avoid that. It's about lunchtime now, so what I'm gonna do, I think, is I got all those letters and hubcaps and junk out of that truck in the back of my truck. And so I think I'm gonna take off, and I'm gonna go out to my place and unload all that and grab something on the way. I want to check and see what all is in this truck though. I noticed there's a few good things in here when I kind of walked past it earlier. I noticed these temperature controls. I don't know exactly what they're out of, but I know those are usually a fairly valuable item if they're not all busted up and falling apart. And it's not busted up. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, so I bet that's worth a little bit of money. There's a bunch of chrome trim in here, but who knows what it's off of. It's hard telling what it's off of. I hate chrome trim just because it's so hard to identify when it's already off the car. So that's just gonna stay right, right where it's at and get crushed. But there's a whole box right here I noticed, clear full of stuff. I think this is all off of Tri-5 Chevys. There's a Bel Air here. There's this piece here. I think that's actually off a truck there. Maybe it's off a car too, I don't know exactly. And this old wiper motor. Well, this stuff's probably fairly valuable. Here's a rear view mirror, dome light. Got this old radio back here. Bunches of cool stuff. There's an old amber colored fog light. There's a clear one. All sorts of neat stuff in this truck that they scrapped. He must have just cleaned out a barn or something. Tossed it clear full. Then over here there's an old SS hubcap. An old bumper guard. Bunch of old distributors. And I don't know if I should pull that stuff out of there or just leave it in there and crush it. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm so, so overworked kind of a shame on this truck here it's got factory bucket seats and center console in it for a regular cab and it's got a tilt steering column that steering column is like a three four hundred dollar piece and those seats I don't know what they're worth they're pretty rough but the frame is all good in them so if the guy wanted to redo them these trucks are starting to get popular but nah, I doubt anybody would buy them somebody would want to come out here and give me 50 bucks and then they wouldn't show up on time and I'd waste five hundred dollars worth of downtime waiting on them to show up I'm definitely not gonna save anything off the truck I'll consider saving the stuff out of the back of it since it's already off if I knew for sure I was going to have my auction, I would save it all and just throw it on pallets and sell it, but I don't know. I'll think about it over the lunch hour. If I decide to save it, I'll come back and I'll load it up later. These old bicycles came in that same load with that truck for scrap as well. Pretty cool old things. This one here, I think this is a Western Flyer. It's not that old. What's cool about these though is you disconnect it right there and you connect it there and you can make it a girl's bike instead of a boy's bike. Then the next bike over is pretty old. I mean, it's definitely pretty old and it's got a really cool Liberty head badge on it kind of hard to see because it's kind of corroded but it's got a statue of liberty on it if i can get it to focus on that there we go that's a little better yeah it's got the statue of liberty on it and it says liberty across it and i think it says something at the top chicago cycles or something like that and then this one over here is an old western flyer if i can get it to focus again there we go yeah it's an old western flyer there it's pretty cool got a really cool head badge on it and a tank so i don't know if they're worth just throwing in the scrap or if there's something good Check out all of these ants. I'm about to take their home away forever. Man, how'd you like to stick your hand in that? Here's another one here that is a little bit of a challenge, not really. What I'll have to do on it is cut the bracket there. And there's no bracket on that side, so yeah, I'll just cut that one bracket right there. And I'll probably cut the pipe back here. And I'll put the fork right there. You can kind of see where I tested it once already. I'll push on that and it'll just go snap. Snap the exhaust manifold and pop right out of there.
Wow, that's pretty incredible. It actually snapped the studs off in the head. Instead of busting the exhaust manifold, there's one little ear broke off on the manifold. Everything else that broke was the bolts. Now, that's pretty crazy. But I went ahead and just cut the radiators out of it, and that made it a whole lot easier to get it out of there. And good morning again. Welcome to Waterworld. It was an absolute goalie washer last night. I never finished recording this video on Friday. It's Monday now. I had just tons of people come in at the very last minute, so I was absolutely swamped. And then as I'm closing the gate, a guy shows up with these. He had a couple junk Ford trucks and then a burnt, I think this is a Dodge Dakota or something like that. Can't really tell what it was. Yeah, Dodge Dakota. He showed up with these and I said, man, I've got to go. I have something important going on tonight. And he says, well, I didn't make it into the other yards and they're all closed. And I saw you were still here, so that means you're open. And I said, no, it doesn't. So luckily my dad was happened to be here, so he went ahead and unloaded them so I could leave. Otherwise, that guy would have been up the creek without a paddle. So I think what I'm going to do today, I was going to crush cars, but with all this water, and I mean, it, it flat flooded because the ground's saturated now because we've been getting so much rain. So now is when the flooding starts because the water has nowhere to go. It can't go down, so it just goes up. And so it's just completely underwater. I left my water boots laying outside, and they filled with water. So I, I have those upside down draining out now, but they're still going to be damp for a while, so I really don't want to put them on. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I've had that guy helping me out cutting down trees. And so I've got piles of tree brush all around the outside of the fence. So I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and empty my truck out and then gather up all that tree brush. I have not seen these tractors in several years at least because they were so covered in trees. And so this is what he did on Friday. He only has about two hours a day to work. So he came in here and cut all the trees down that were around these tractors. And then he went through and sprayed killer on the stumps. That way they won't grow back. And that's gonna be a wrap guys. I'm just gonna keep working on this for a while, take care of most of this, or I actually got my water boots to dry out a little bit now, so I may go in there and process some cars. I'm not sure what I'll do yet, but I think I'm gonna stop recording here. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Found some pretty cool stuff in the junk today. I'm not sure what I'll be filming next. I had a bunch of farm cleanups I needed to do, but they're completely flooded out. Some of them, the road's even washed out. So <laughs> I don't know what's gonna be happening next, but as soon as something interesting happens, I'll pop the camera out and I'll record it. If you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Please keep checking back. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for all your support. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day and remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.